Hello everybody, this is Eric Novice. In this video, I'm going to talk about the UBF founder's death and why I think he was murdered, why I suspect there's foul play in his death. Excuse me. So yeah, this video is going to be kind of long. It's not going to be as long as the Chicago UBF video, which is like an hour long, but it's going to probably, but it's going to be pretty long. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of information in this video. So feel free to pause or go back to what I said earlier. Don't worry, I'm gonna put everything I show you in this video. I'll put the link in the links in the description below. So I started to suspect that maybe that the UB uh, missionaries let the founder die on purpose because the circumstances prior and around his death were very suspicious. This is a recent post. Well, actually, I made this article back in the end of 2018. And this post basically talks about how one of the UB missionaries was dead and was brought back to life. So I was thinking why wasn't the same thing done to the founder. And there was an article that talked about his death. There was content that was outside of UBF. It was this post. It's called Sammy Lee, comma, 70 by, the, by this reporter John Kielman. Okay. Now this is from UBF because you see Mark Vesekovic. So that's, they used to be the founders like Sheep, one the, and he's one of the most prominent leaders in UBF. So that's how you know this is talking about UBF. But what's very interesting, oh, it's also mentioned Sarah Berry. Oh, my apologies. It does mention University of Bell Fellowship one time. But what's very interesting about this article is that his cause of death is never mentioned at all. It just talks about a little bit of his history. And that's just pretty much it. And this is the guy who wrote the article, John Kilman. So I actually emailed him a while back asking about the article. And basically what he says is that he assumed it was the same from an editor. I honestly don't remember. And I understand. I could understand like not remembering every single detail, but the fact that he claims or implies that he doesn't remember at all sounds very fishy. So in the fact that the article is under his article is under this guy's name. So then you're wondering how did the founder die? It's actually mentioned in the UBF newsletter. That was me back in 2002 dedicated to the founder himself. This is the founder right, himself. Okay. Right. It turns out that he had health issues prior to his death. Right here are some examples. Right. So this is from their own newsletter. So he, um, Lee, Right here, that's referring to the founder. He had been on oxygen at home for several weeks under the care of UBF doctors. He was feeling much better and was thinking of going back to his office Monday morning. Sunday night, the elders all visited him and demonstrated his strong heart by marching one place 100 times. Then on Monday morning, there was an electric shortage which set his house on fire. The fire was put out by the Chicago Fire Department rather quickly, but Dr. Lee passed out because of the smoke in his already weak lungs. He had to stop and he went to heaven on Tuesday, January 8th, 2002. Alright, so there's the source where you could find it. 7 8. So, like I, like I said here, so it really got me wondering several things. One, is that how come Sarah Berry seems to be the only one who knew exactly how the founder died? And it's also very strange is how none of the UBF leaders visited him while he was hospitalized. And it's also the question of where were the UBF doctors were when he was still alive? And this was actually talked about in the old forums on the on the Reform UBF X UBF websites. Some archives. 
right here to talk about his death. Today, the Sabbath in the morning, there was a fire in Dr. Samuel Lee's house. Dr. Lee was located by the fireman, was taken by ambulance to St. Francis, and later to move to the Lutheran General Hospital. Why? Why did he change the hospital? At the present time, he is in a coma. Here's, here's another post by the Robin News reporter. The above story is being confirmed as true by those answering the telephone at the Chicago Revenue Center. Some associates in the neighborhood, they're checking out the scene at this present time. We're not able to confirm who this quote fact friend is, but she may be American Shepherdess who is very loyal to Samuel Lee. And this is a very interesting commentary from this author who is known as Just the Disciple. Contrary to what was first reported, Dr. Lee had the strength to get out of the house. He was sick with respiratory problems, possibly from pneumonia for about three weeks, but he was recovering and was on his feet looking to come back in the week. The fire and company found him in the bathroom. Apparently, he stayed in the home to deal with the fire as his wife went to call 911. He could have walked out with her if he wanted to. So later, I did some research. It turns out that... Grace Ailey, the founder's wife, actually went to neighbor's house to call 911, which is a little bizarre. A little bizarre. Sorry. I would figure that she would, why would they need to go to the neighbor's house to call if they themselves have a phone? But I do understand why she would leave the house. Why didn't she try to get the founder to come with them, which is a little odd. This is, but this part is a little weird in the end. Lee had a lot of faith. He had a lot of courage to try and fight the fire in such a conditional age. Wait, what? No sane person would try to fight the fire in their own home. He is not a firefighter. This, that's a very, this is a bizarre post. This is an archive from the whole um, Rescue UBF website. Don't worry, I'll put a link in the description below. Alright. And this was a commentary by Daniel Hong, who is Paul Hong's brother. He died several months after the founder did. And this is a quote from his own words. Folks, if Dr. Lee was an evil person, then don't worry, God will purge you. If not, then he'll purge you, folks. That was weird. This is very odd coming from a UBF missionary. You think he would be praying about the founder's recovery, the founder's safety, and hoping that he'd be alive. But he, the, his attitude towards... The founder's condition makes it as though he didn't really care what happened to him. All right. So I could not, for the life of me, find out who was the Roby Reporter News Network who actually reported reported um the founder's death. I couldn't find any broadcast about the founder's death. Pretty sure it did. Pretty sure there was a broadcast, but for some reason, the UBF Lee, UBF HQ must have deleted it or destroyed it online. January 8, 2002. Driving by the UBF Chicago Center this morning, one could see a complete lack of activity. It's a beautiful day in Chicago, temperature, and new beginning here. Just around the corner at 6510 North Campbell, a solitary worker for a board of company put the finishing touches on a fire damaged house the man a muscular hispanic man who may have played college football wrote war and fire department new york baseball hat in tribute to the real heroes of september 11th the man informed for our new service that samuel lee passed away this morning the board of men made a comment that bad people quote that bad people die in a bad way end quote he then finished his job put his tools back in the truck headed for the next fire damaged building Okay, that is very odd. What makes this very odd is that we don't know who this dude was and the fact that he commented this way as though he knew the founder. No one would comment something about the founder unless they knew him very personally.
right so if you actually type this up you get this location if you go on Google Maps and if this is his if this was the founders house you can see there's a lot of houses in the area so there's no way this could not have gone unnoticed right if you went to the neighbor left side or even across the street I felt as though there was it looks like he was pretty capable of being saved from the fire And it's just a little side note here that this is a recent, another recent, more recent article that was on the UV website talking about how this building was birthed through loose electricity. Sound familiar? Anyways, let me go back to more details of why this is very suspicious. Look at this photo. Notice that they don't smile. All right, there was this impression they found that. The administrators don't even like um, the founder. And this is quote. This is from Joe Chung's blog. I'm gonna read this to you guys. The whole paragraph. Shortly after Sam Sam Lee's death, I heard some interesting stories from inside UBF. One was that on that day, or or the day after Lee's death, Sam Sarah Berry went to the YMCA or somewhere and took a nice relaxing swim. Other stories consisted of people like my mother, the wife of Joseph Chung, expressing relief that Lee had died, or the story of Ron Ward, who was so bad after being under Lee's direct, man Lee's direct daily manipulation for years that he was ready to go quote-unquote pioneer another chapter. His death was apparently one that many people in and out of UBF was looking forward to. Such is often the case with tyrants, as is also the case with many tyrants. Even while many seek to express relief that he is finally dead, UBF tries to put the best face on Lee and continue to pay tribute to him and his twisted legacy. I think this is very odd that they would that the co founder would go on a swim. You think that they would she and other people would be seriously mourning for him. Not necessarily like putting ashes on their head, but they would be seriously mourning for the guy, not going for a swim or express relief. I received word from an insider that when the founder died, he saw expressions on some people on how happy he would, happy they were when he died, which which really got me to believe that there was foul play on his death. So the founder's wife was the last person to see him, and this is some, this is something that really caught my attention. Correction, what? I think Bleak Grace Lee may have some involvement in his death. I don't think she killed him, but she probably knows more than she's letting on. And this is a very interesting incident she talks about in the same newsletter. So she's talking about the founder. He gave all his heart and mind and strength to prepare the ISU International Summer Bible Conference in 2001. While preparing for the conference, one time he fell in the bathroom and broke two of his ribs after hearing painful and heartbreaking news. Right? And he talks about how he fell down the stairs and bruised his clothes all over his body. This guy literally broke his ribs and fell down a flight of stairs. So we're just going to show that something's really wrong. So that something's really wrong. Wrong about here. So prior to his death, Leary have health issues and he was prone to self-injury. And yet, it doesn't seem like anything was done to prevent any self-injuries in the future. It's as though his death had been staged. Here's something else I wanted to talk about. At the beginning of this year, 2002, this is important because this is around the time when, when the third crisis in UBF was was still pretty dominant. There were difficult problems in Korea, UBF, and his heart was so painful and sore that they could not sleep at night. So this is Grace Ailey, his wife, that's still writing this. 
When he was suffering from insomnia, he called Sarah B. Chow. She did not mind coming to help at any time of the day or night. She did not have time to take care of her family, her children, or herself, but wholeheartedly serve goals. God's servant. Right, give me a second. Right. This is interesting. I didn't even know that he had a female EBF missionary confronting him, comforting him, you know. You know, basically a EBF female missionary on call to comfort Dr. Dr. Lee whenever he needed it. I'm not suggesting that he was committing adultery, but I think that's a little odd that he would ca call a UBF missionary to comfort him instead of his wife. So this also begs, begs the question which came to my mind was, wait a minute, why, why didn't Grace A. Lee call Sarah B. Chow the day, that, the day the founder died, the day when the fire went out? Like why didn't she call, why didn't she notify Sarah B. Chow after she called the fire department? I thought that was a little weird to meet Dr. Lee, or at least tell him like where he was hospitalized. It was appears that Grace Lee intentionally did not tell her. And this is kind of a bizarre reaction. So instead of trying to help her husband out of the house calling the UBF doctors she went to the neighbor's house and called the fire department which is like I said this is very bizarre one thing I wanted to comment before I continue was that was you're probably wondering why didn't the neighbors help him which is also pretty odd as well unless all every single neighbor around his house was physically disabled or elderly people there was there's no way they could not have helped him out of the fire no way none of the neighbors couldn't help him all right so here's more evidence that his condition was really bad prior to his death after the christmas worship service one of dr lee's hearts these heart chambers collapsed doctors ordered him to wear an oxygen mask he was advised to be hospitalized but he refused so this is written by grace co one of his daughters which she now, as I stated here, they confirmed that he had illness prior, prior to his death. Illness to the point where he, they found he needed an oxygen mask. If you don't know what an oxygen mask is, mask. This is an oxygen mask for those who, for those who are wondering. That's an oxygen mask. You've probably seen this before, but you don't know what it's called. Those things that people wear, or you've seen one of those medical shows like House or something like, or Scrubs, people wearing that, that's an oxy oxygen mask. Mask. And there's an oxygen tank. Yeah. This is an oxygen tank. That's this is what an oxygen tank is because usually a mask is connected to a tank like this, or it could be like something smaller, or more mobile. But yes, the founder was on. Had to be. Needed an oxygen tank. So his health didn't go unnoticed. So everybody, in Ch at least in Chicago, you knew about his condition. Here's some more interesting intel. Suddenly he felt terribly ill and with pneumonia. pneumonia. Nevertheless, he trained me faithfully every Saturday evening in his hospital room for several hours. He had lung biopsy, a procedure that took nearly four hours. Still, that evening he worked with me sitting on the hospital bed and we shouted God's word together and laughed. A laugh from our stomachs. His attending physician, Doctor Liz Lincoln, was pretty mad. 
Still not to leave, pray for me. This is been So this so Dr. Liz Lincoln is also one of the UBF doctors that that was mentioned that was indirectly mentioned earlier. So again begs the question, why Dr. L why wasn't Dr. Liz Lincoln informed as soon as the fire happened? Why didn't they, why didn't, why didn't Grace A. Lee talk to her her when he was in the fire when he needed help? Knowing that he needed serious help. Right. So again, more proof again, more proof of his, his serious condition. Once Scott Servants suffered an attack of pneumonia a few days after lung surgery, he came to an orchestra practice with an IV attached to him. The stories were endless. So again, everybody knew that he was in serious condition. If you don't know what IV is, you know those things that when people hospital bed they attach those bags and you put it the syringe? That's what an IV is. So Paul Chow kept up with Dr. Lee when he had IV but didn't but was nowhere around when he was hospitalized. Then she didn't Grace Lee inform Paul Chow of the situation. And like I said very suspicious. Right. There's again more evidence that he was in serious serious health problems. Right. This is a UBF missionary recalling his encounter with the founder. I felt so bad when I saw your swollen hands and deep facial wounds and laceration with sultures. I already saw the shadow of death coming near you then. More than that when I thought of those who were attacking the sick and old servant of God so cruelly. So yes, the, so yes, it's been acknowledged that he was sick at this time. Right, but you loved God so much that not even your physical sickness could keep you from giving your heart and all your strength to serving God. No one could stop you. He's right about that. No one could truly stop him. Right. I heard that even your weak physical condition you served through the 2001 Christmas worship service. Right? Here again, the, you know, you need oxygen to help you breathe. I knew all along that you were such a person, so I was not much surprised that you were going home in such a way. So laceration with soldier is basically the medical term for stitches. This is just an example and it's, it probably didn't look like that when he did it to the founder but that's what he's talking about when he says so those are not familiar with this term that's what laceration means is when you get stitches. So the quote was from John Kim from from one of the UBF chapters in Korea so not only did Chicago UBF knew about the founder's death, death and his illness, but it seems that other people recognize his failing condition as well. On January 2nd, 2002, I visited Dr. Sammy Lee and met him. I didn't expect that it would be the last time. He had an oxygen, dev an oxygen device attached to him. Right. So this is from Paul Hong, right? He visited him in the hospital prior to his sickness. But yet, Paul Hong didn't have a chance to meet him the day he, the day he was in a coma. That, that doesn't make any sense, right? It makes no sense that Paul Hong had time to visit Dr. Lee the day he wasn't he was in the hospital. He wasn't. Oh, this is a typo. He wasn't in the hospital. Like at his home. But he had time to visit a week prior. The most hostile suspect regarding his death would be Barry, Grace Lee, Liz Lincoln, Henry Chow, 
and Paul Chow. These three are the most likely suspects. The fact that the UBF leaders and Dr. Lee's circle knew at most a few months before his death that his critical health conditions showed a lack of response to Aiden when he was hospitalized with flame healing and a secret expression of relief indicated after Lee's death may have been oh, was supposed to be staged, not stagged. I do believe um, the CIA have some indirect involvement with his death. I think they would collaborate in order to get a jail free card. This would explain why explain why how UBF would able to get away with certain things such as illegal adoptions, avoiding taxes with the IRS, etc. So I actually made a whole theory about this. I'll talk about this in more detail in another video. Basically I was Basically, here I'm talking about how the CAA may be involved with UBF and the founder and certain things that don't make sense. But this is for another video for another time. I actually did another video about the documentation, how they've been under the CIA and the FBI radar for a long time. I showed you guys this already. I'll link to that video description below so yeah i do think it was so like i said i do believe it's foul play you have any information or is anything you want, me to, you want me to clarify what i said in the video or if there's something that you know or want to correct me about please um don't hesitate to contact me in any way i'll put a video on how to contact me in the description below I almost forgot that prior to me making this post it was like I said it was brought up in the old forum back in 2002 and it was also brought up one more time prior to me making the post back in 2004 Yeah, like I said, some of the details don't really make too much sense. I was in UBF at the time of the founder's death. Told that the wife found him dead after he took in a shower. It's kind of weird. Some of the details don't add up. Also, by my UBS sources, they died of smoke inhalation in the fire. I also talk about like another pro UBF book that was ironically made by someone who actually left UBF. There's the all links in this links will be in the description below. I was led to believe that Lee died peacefully, quote unquote, beside his wife, and the angels came to I was not told about a fire or a coma or that he lived another ten days ten days later than he died. I was told by people I trust in our by rescue UBF that the fireman found him dead in his bathroom. He had a coma, when was it? Could have been taken to the hospital while in a coma. Medical experts would have tried to save him. But the simple fact that he died in a fire. I believe he had ample time to get out of the house. He was obviously smart enough to know he was preaching a different gospel. Yeah, the way he died was very odd. But I felt like they could have saved him, you know. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this video. All links will be in the description below. Oh, one... Actually, there's some more things before I forget. 
one thing I want to show you is that the founder's death was actually so here's the here's the gravestone to it sorry the image was really small there was actually a bigger image let me see if I can find it See, I can find it. There was an image of like his tombstone. There was another image, but it seems to have been lost. This is the tombstone of the founder, University Bell Fellowship, Shepherd, Dr. Samuel Lee. There was another photo like that, but I couldn't find it. But yet, they made it like a giant tombstone when he died. And it seems like I can't find it at the moment. I, was, I did find it once, but. It's a possibility they probably took it down. One more thing I also, for, before I forget to mention this video, was that the founder's death was an open casket funeral. I mean, open casket is that you actually see the person's face. Let's see if I could find the image real quick. So yes, the the founder was basically a dwarf. He was only some records say that he was only five feet tall. Not this one, I think it was the second one. You find the two. This is the So you see right here, found it. So this is, you can see right here, this is an open <laughs> casket funeral where you actually see the person's face. Open casket funeral. That's where you find the image here. So yes, that's all for today. And until next time.